So go on and run free. You are too close to me. Hello, hello. Hello, Patricia. Good evening. Hello, Patricia. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Hi, Francisco. Good evening. Welcome. Hey, good evening. Hello, Erica. Hello. All good? Erica. Start it. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Smile. Because this life is too short. Ricardo Ticas is connecting his audio. Audio. Está conectando la audio. <laughs> okay, he's connecting his audio. Welcome, Ricardo. Good evening. Sorry, sorry, mute. Microphone okay. is out. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, Hello. Ricardo? I'm doing great. Hi. What about you? Uh, I'm happy. I'm Why? Happy. Well, I was absent Friday in my English class. And, and you're happy? And today, today. Today, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. To learn a, a little. A little bit. To learn okay. A little. Good. Welcome to your class then. That I'm glad to have you back. Good to see you guys. So today we're going to do um, a brief review of uh, what we shortly, what we shortly saw on Friday. We talked about wishes, how to talk about wish, right? But I'm expecting the others because I have an announcement. I have something to ask you and it's very important for us. So in the meantime, let's practice. I think we have to take advantage of the time, right? So let's take advantage of time. Da -da -da -da. Uh oh. Okay, Francisco. Hi, Tammy. What do you do today? Ready? Oh, uh, okay. Ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Yes. What do you do today? Um, in this day, I woke up at. Then I take a shower, 
and I learned my over my job then I had a lot of work in my job in this day and then get home around at 8 p.m. I didn't get the last sentence. Okay, keep going. Uh huh. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, Frank, come on. Don't, 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 don't stop. Don't stop, Frank. Okay, uh, let's start. Great job. Good job, okay? Try it. Don't stop. I like that. Keep going. Keep going. Don't get nervous. Never get nervous. So in this day, can you replace this with something else? Okay. In this day? Okay. What else could you say instead of in this day? Today. Today. <laughs> there you go. Today. Da, da, da. Okay. Good job. You did uh, five sentences. Five good sentences. Okay. Let's work on your word choosing. Okay. Let's work on your words choosing. Okay. What words sound better when I speak um, in this day or today? Okay. I went my job. I didn't hear the preposition there. I didn't hear the preposition too. I went to my job. Okay. Okay. And I didn't get what happened at eight o'clock. What happened at eight o'clock? Get at home. I got home. Okay. I got home. Uh, aquí si no necesitas la preposición. I, I get at home. No, I got home. I got home. Um, good, okay. good job. So let's work on that. Where, number one, words choosing. What words should I use or sound better? And number two, when do I use a preposition? Okay. Homework, Google it, study the difference between two and four. Why do I need two in this sentence? Okay, good job. Okay, select okay. somebody else, choose somebody else, quick. Francisco, select somebody. Okay, let me see. Erika. Erika, okay. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Erika. Ready? What do you do today? What do you do today? Three, two, one, action. Today I am the vacation and I had a breakfast and the eight I am and I had a I have a lunch already um one PM and I sleep slept in the afternoon <laughs> and and watch TV um, the uh, till 3 p.m. and um, 4 p.m. And I went, no, I have a uh, exercise one hour and the night I have a dinner. Thank you. That was it. Thank you very much. What's the right spelling? I always make this spelling mistake. 
There you go. Okay. Good job. You didn't stop. That's very important. Fluency, fluency. Keep talking, keep talking. Okay. Um, now, hmm. <coughs> this, Erika, it's called a buffer. Do you know what is a buffer? Buffer? Mm -hmm. Buffer uh, words. Muletia. Excellent. Yeah, mm. muletia. Okay. Huh. That's the main area right now of opportunity. La muletia se forma cuando no tenés seguridad de lo que querés decir. It's okay. Está bien. Tenés, solo tenemos que trabajar en eso, okay? I had breakfast. No necesito el artículo. Es lógico, es una, una muletilla. I had breakfast. Um, otra muletilla. Porque no sé qué preposición ocupar. ¿Qué preposición ocupo cuando digo la hora, chicos? At. 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 I had breakfast at 8 a.m. Very good. And again, I had lunch. De nuevo. Ok. At 1 p.m. Ok. Ahora, eh, y the ending, repeat, watched. Watch. Perfect, I watched, okay. I watched TV, y de nuevo la muletilla, mira. Estás poniendo in the, o solo el artículo the, por no decir at, 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 antes de la hora. I watched TV at 3 p.m., okay. Y aquí quería decir algo, vi televisión de 3 a 4 p.m., ¿verdad? So I watch TV. Yes. Okay, let's do it. I watch TV. No era at. Era from. From 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Siempre, chicos, cuando hablo de un periodo de tiempo de que esto pasó de esta hora a esta hora, okay? I watch TV from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Even for distances, I walk from home to my job. I walk from home to my job. I start, I, I work, I work from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. From two, from two. I had exercise by aquí. We need the right verb. I did exercises or I did exercise. I exercised. Estoy varias maneras de decirlo, okay? I exercised for an hour, let's say. I exercise for an hour. Me ejercité por una hora. Good job. Okay, watch this video again. Do it again. Watch the video again and repeat. Understand, okay, and write it down. Great job, Erika. Keep it up. Okay. Keep it up. Keep it up. Okay. Eso quiere decir continúa así, ok? Keep it up. <laughs> Let's correct those areas. If you have any questions, guys, don't forget. Text me. Don't call me. Don't call me. Through WhatsApp, don't call me. Never call me through WhatsApp. Please, just text me, ok? And by the way, la tienda se cierra a las 11, señores. Have to sleep, ok? <laughs> Yesterday, somebody was texting me. At about 1 a.m. and I was like, what? No, I don't exist after midnight. Okay, antes de continuar, señores, voy a hacer una pausa y les voy a hablar en español por un minuto. Ustedes saben que no hablo muy bien el español, ¿verdad? pero se me sale el acento que tengo. Y también que hablo inglés y como hablo el español, van a decir. Miren, este, en serio, en confianza, en buena onda, todos terminaron... <laughs> Todos terminaron eh, la plataforma. Quiero que me pongan una manita así, en su ventanita, si terminaron la plataforma. Quiero ver. Ok, Marlon. Ya, yeah. Giovanni. Ricardo. Ya, yeah. Francisco. Section 3. Yeah, and hasta el midterm. The yeah. midterm evaluation. Yes. Really, Carmen? <laughs> no, really. Ok, Stephanie. Know. Stephanie, ¿qué onda? Juliana, oh, Juliana, come on. Hermes. Abel. Ok, guys, well, creo que ya todos somos adultos, somos grandes ya y 
sí, yo sé, cuesta, da una gran pereza, por no ser otra cosa. Pero, hey, ¿alguien sabe lo que es la disciplina? Rápido, tenemos dos minutos para abarcar este tema. Dos minutos. Disciplina, ¿qué es la disciplina? Yo ya sabía, Francisco, espérame, espérame, ya sabía. Ser determinante. Ah, ser determinante. Ser determinante en todas las cosas que nos Determinado, proponemos. ser determinado en todas las cosas que nos proponemos. Ajá, ¿qué, qué, qué, ¿cumplir qué? Aunque cueste. Aunque cueste. María Luisa, ¿verdad? Yes, I am. I told you this, I told you this in 2016. Te lo dije en 2016, María Luisa, please. Yes. ¿Qué es? I remember. Ser constante, dice Juliana. Ser constante. Uh -huh. What is it? Va, ya se nos fue el tiempo. Hacer lo que tenés que hacer, cuando lo tenés que hacer, aunque no lo quieras hacer. Escribilo. Yo, Giovanni, hago lo que tengo que hacer, cuando lo tengo que hacer, aunque no lo quiera hacer. Yo, Ricardo, hago lo que tengo que hacer, cuando lo tengo que hacer, aunque no lo quiera hacer. Y ponerle en alarma al teléfono. Cinco alarmas a la misma hora, imagínate. Una tras otra, cada cinco minutos. Es lo que yo hago para levantarme, no le voy a mentir. Me levanto a las cuatro de la mañana, pongo una alarma a las cuatro y otra a las cuatro y cinco y otra a las cuatro y diez. Casi me matan a veces. Me apaga esa cosa. Y yo, ya me levanté. Y dejar el teléfono lejos. Eso me, es lo único que me funciona para levantarme. Entonces, hacer lo que tenés que hacer cuando lo tenés que hacer, aunque no lo quieras hacer. Y repetítelo. Okay. La persistencia debe... Hostigate todos los días a ti mismo para alcanzar algo bueno. Hoy, hostigate todos los días para alcanzar algo bueno. Caete mal vos solo. Y así, ya me tenés harto con eso de que ya no vas a comer azúcar. Ya. Ya, pero después vas a decir, pues ya. Así es con los profesores también. Yo lamentablemente no puedo estar todo el día con ustedes diciéndole, ya hice la tarea, ya hice la tarea. Pero el profesor que más te hizo pedazos la vida en el tercer ciclo, en el bachillerato, ¿sí o no? La universidad. Hoy decís, puy, ese señor sí, era mi pesadilla, pero me enseñó cosas serias. Ok, so. Pues that's si, the way. Yo si hubiera seguido, seguido con Rafael las clases, ya eh, hubiese aprendido bien porque... Todos esos consejos ayudan. Mi problema fue que comencé a estudiar mi maestría y dejé el inglés por un lado. Entonces, ya terminé mi maestría y he empezado nuevamente con el inglés. Congratulations. I didn't know Thank that. You. Great job. Good job. Thank you. Felicidades. Admirable, María Luisa. Muy admirable. La respeto. Wow. Una maestría. That's awesome. Ok. Good. So, se los dejo a la conciencia, señores. Si no han hecho la plataforma, terminen esta noche, por favor. Good. So, let's cover the last topic from unit, I mean, section three. This week, this week on the platform, we only have like three or, yeah, three topics. So, we will take, we will take advantage of this time to improve small details, okay? So the first, sec the first, last section of section three, the last video of section three, talked about how to use wish, the verb wish, with the past tense to refer to present wishes. So I live with my parents. I don't know if you can read. Can you, can you see the reading? Mm. No. So it yes, says, I can. Okay, it says, I live with my parents. I wish. I didn't live with my parents. I wish I had my own apartment. So you have a structure to follow. Subject, wish, and then again, a subject, a verb in the past, <coughs> and then a complement. Um, please allow me one second. Something just happened. One minute, please, okay?
I'm really sorry. It was a little inconvenience outside. So, good. I can't move out. I wish I could move out. So we have different ways of using wish. Did you preview this topic? Mm. No? No. Okay, let's take a look really quick. Let me do something really quick here so we can have it clearer. I'm going to send you this image because it's very blurry. It's a little bit blurry. I want you to open your WhatsApp and if possible, if you can switch between windows and take a look at the image. There you go. So take a look at the image and look at the examples. There's just one thing that wouldn't make sense, let's say. And is the use of wear with I, right? When they say I wear, I wish it wear, I wish it wear. I wish it wear. You see that in the example? Yeah. Right, Jay? Okay, so here it is. So here you have an example. Um, I wish it were easier. Hmm. After which, where is used with all pronouns. Bien, lo voy a explicar súper rápido en español. El where eh, se utiliza en situaciones uh, figurativas. ¿Ya? ¿No has escuchado que alguien dice, if I were you? Right? ¿Le suena eso? Si yo fuese, perdón, si yo fuese tú. Remember, if I were you, I would pay my rent. For example, if I were you. So, este es un, ¿existe esa situación? ¿Podría yo ser tú? Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> es como decir, si yo estuviese en tus zapatos. So, this is a figurative way of speaking. Okay. It's just a figure, a figurative way of speaking. If I were you, si yo fuese tú. Okay. So the same thing happened here. I wish it were easier. I wish it weren't so difficult. I wish English weren't so difficult. You can also say wasn't. Got it? Right. I wish it were. Mm -hmm. I wish it were so, um, I wish it was easier. I wish this was easier. My parents won't stop worrying about me. I wish they will stop worrying about me. So that's another condition. You can use model verbs with wish, as you can see in the examples. Do you have any questions? Oh, goodness. No? In Spanish, I wish it were easier. It sería que fuera fácil in Spanish. Okay, translate. <laughs> translate. <laughs> only, only, only one sentence. Yeah. No, come on, translate. It's very important. It's your. This one is not in the examples. How do you translate this example? I know it's negative, it's very negative, but how do you translate it? Sería nunca haberte conocido. I wish never know it. <laughs> okay. I wish. I wish never. 
I, I never know. No. I wish mm -hmm. I never know you. Met you. Met you. Uh, uh, Excellent. Uh, very good. I wish I never met you. Good. Very good. Give me one second, please. Okay. Bien. So let's play something really easy. Can you give me an example in Spanish so we can translate it? I need your help. Let's see, um, someone very creative. Marlon, give me a Spanish sentence so everybody can translate it. Mm, ¿Desearía poder hablar inglés? Oh. Hi. Erika, yes, go ahead. I wish to speak, talk English. Okay, I wish speak, talk English. Um, uh, hmm. Bueno, tengo, tengo dos verbos. Vamos a ocupar speak, okay? I wish I speak. I wish I speak English. I okay? Speak. I wish I... Ojo, falta algo ahí, eh? I wish I could. I wish I could. De sería poder... Could. Yeah. I, could. I wish I could. Siguiendo el patrón, following the pattern, okay? I wish I passed of the verb. De sería y el pasado del verbo. ¿Cuál es el pasado de poder? Could. Yeah. I wish I could speak English. Very good. I wish I could speak English. Could. Okay. Very good. Great job. Erika, another sentence in Spanish. Desearía hacer ejercicios regularmente. Okay. La misma regla que acabamos de aplicar con los verbos en pasado aplica aquí. Todo empieza con lo mismo, ¿no? I wish. I wish I. Alguien, vamos. Have. I, I do have. I do. I did. Okay. Exercise. Work out? No. How do you say regularmente in English? Regular. Regular. Regularly. Ese mente es la L Y. Y eso lo convierte en un adverbio, right? So, regularly. Okay. I wish I did exercises regularly. Perfect. Very good. Okay. Who answered? Ricardo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Ricardo, give me another example. Let's try something mm. else. Um, change this. this. Change the subject. Mm. Okay. Mm. Let's talk about the weather. Let's talk about the country. Okay. Uh, the, the... Ella des, desearía ser actriz. Okay. I know, it's Miss Pell. Mm -hmm. mm. She. Come on, guys. She. I haven't heard Edwin, Stephanie, I haven't heard Patricia. Joan is thinking, Victor is not there. I cannot see you, Victor. Juliana? She wishes, she wishes. She was she an wishes. actress. Actress. She wishes. She wishes. She wishes. Uh -huh. She was she an was, actress. was an actress. An, an actress. An actress, an actress, an actress. An actress, an actress. An actress. An actress. She an wishes actress. she was an actress. 
Yeah. What do you think, guys? Is that correct? Is that example here? Sure, sir. I, I have a doubt. Yeah, tell me. You use wishes. Yes, because we're talking in third person. Okay. That's correct. That is right. And he said it right. She okay. wishes she was an actress. Now, she take a look at this. Look at this. Look at that. You see that? The corrector is correcting me. It's telling me to use where instead of was. <gasps> where? 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 Yes, she wishes she were an actress. So this corrector from Word is identifying that I'm talking about a figurative way. You know, I'm talking in a figurative way. So she wishes she, wishes she were an actress. I don't like the way it sounds, but that's grammar. She wishes she were an actress. She wishes she were an actress. Try it. She Is wishes a, she wishes. She, uh, el she porque se repite. She wishes she were an actress. Um, because I could say she was she wishes you were an actress. And then it will change the direction mm -hmm. of the sentence. Cambiaría la dirección de la oración, María Luisa. So ella desearía que tú fueras una actriz o ella desearía ser una ella desearía ser una actriz de sí mismo okay. Okay. siempre con la dirección hacia quién va dirigido el deseo yeah. she wishes okay. she Thank were you. an actor yeah perfect like a boomerang yeah like a boomerang that's right in this case if you say you you know she wishes you were an actress okay let's see there's someone on the chat she wishes she was an actress uh, be careful with actress. Look at the spelling, Stephanie. Yep. Actress. There you go. Okay. And last example. Edwin. Eh, el desearía saber bailar. Excellent. Uh huh, guys. Who's got the answer? No, don't use the translator, okay, from Google. Uh huh, Abigail. She wishes now dancing. <laughs> she wishes known dancing like that. Uh, Dancing now. <laughs> he look at, look at the yeah, excellent. Look he, at the structure. Look at the structure. He, he, he wishes. He, he wishes. He, he wishes. He no dance. He no dance. Uh, what is the past of no? New. New. Oh. Okay. Now let's continue. He wishes he knew. Teacher and could be uh, he wishes yes. knew how to dance. That's the way, how to dance. He wishes he knew how to dance. When you need to know how to do something, how to do something, how to play the guitar. Mm -hmm. Yep, he wishes he knew how to dance. He wishes he knew how to dance. I would recommend you to look at this video, look at this class again, and understand that what we're doing is following a pattern. Again, you're following a pattern. Okay, then you have a verb, the verb wish. Okay, if needed, if needed, right? Third person, be careful with the third person. Okay, only if you need it. Then you need a subject again, then the past verb, and then the complement. This is what you're doing, guys. It's following a pattern, subject, wish, or wishes, okay? I have a question for you, uh, Marlon. Yeah, teacher. Okay, uh, could I say something in past? Could I use, could you try using, 
using this, conjugating in past, wish. With another sentence. Yeah, try to build a sentence wishing in the past. I wish I had a pet. I wish I, wa I had a pet. Ah, you didn't get it. Okay, let me give you a sentence really quick. This is poetry, poetry, okay? El deseo no estar vivo. Okay. Um, Marlon, is Rebecca around? Is Rebecca around? I haven't seen her. Didn't say good hello to Rebecca. Oh, yeah, there hello. she is. Hello. Okay, can you try it, guys? Marlon, Rebecca, Ricardo, anybody? Let's try it. How would you say this? El deseo no estar vivo. He wishes this. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, he wished. Uh, there you go. <laughs> he wished. Mm -hmm. Is this? Uh, oh. Hmm. Third person. Yeah, it moved to Spanish. Okay. He wished. He wished. He weren't alive. alive. He wished he weren't alive. He wished he weren't alive. He wished he weren't alive. Okay, that's one option. Y lo voy a decir en español. Esa es una opción. Eh, pero cuando lees po poesía, esto te puede causar un conflicto y pensar que él deseó que él no estuviese vivo. Lo que decía María Luisa, ¿por qué repito el él? Ok, dependerá del contexto o la manera de escribir de un poeta, porque solo en poesía he visto eso. Ok, este oración es así. So, he wished he were in life. Um, he wished not to be alive. Ok, he wished not to be alive. Hmm. and so on. I mean maneras de decir las cosas en inglés. But in this case, we're talking in past. He wished, he wished, he wished. <coughs> Not to be alive, being dead. Got it? I got it. Qué ejemplo got más it. negativo lo que está dando este día este señor ahí. Okay, it's just an example, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, practice. That's a very interesting topic as well. So let's move on with your platform. And, oops, hold on. It's not the page. Is it? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Do you have any questions? Preguntas, dudas, inquietudes, sugerencias? Well, I open this up. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Me, me. Yep, go eh, ahead. Entonces, eh, sería siempre si es que se o desearía, no tiene ninguna, ningún cambio. Lo que va a tener cambio lo demás la, de, de, la, de la oración, el, el verbo, el sujeto, etc. Correcto. El I wish se mantendría o lo conjugas en el tiempo gramatical que estés ocupando. For example, Francisco, by the time, by the time I'm 50 years old, by the time I'm 50 years old, I will wish to be very energetic. Para cuando tenga 50 años, desearé ser muy energético, ser muy fuerte. Okay. <laughs> future, future. Okay, good question. Perfect. Question. So, in that case, wish 
is being affected by the grammar tense you're using. Any other question? This is the midterm. Now let's go with section number four. And this will be very simple. We have the simple past versus the present perfect. Now I need you to pay attention because I will make you questions about this video. Once it is over, I will start making questions to each of you. So please pay attention, okay? Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to talk about the kind of food that you've eaten and the restaurants that you've visited. You'll also learn how to express past experiences. For example, you'll be able to ask and answer the following question. Have you ever eaten exotic food? Before I present the structure that we'll learn in this class, I would like for you to listen to an audio program. This audio program illustrates how this topic is used. Your task is to listen carefully as I'll ask you questions about the audio program at the end. Hey, this sounds strange. Snails with garlic. Have you ever eaten snails? Yes, I have. I had them here just last week. Did you like them? Yes, I did. They were delicious. Why don't you try some? No, I don't think so. Have you decided on an appetizer yet? Yes. I'll have a small order of the snails, please. And you, sir? I think I'll have the fried brains. Fried brains? I've never heard of that. It sounds scary. Let me present the structure now. I would like to start by presenting this concept to you. The first thing is that we use the simple past for completed events at a definite time in the past. In other words, things that you did and have completed. And we use the present perfect for events within a time period up to the present time. In other words, events that you started in the past and those have continued to the present and they're not complete yet. Now, what we're going to learn in today's lesson is how the two are related. First of all, I may ask you a question, such as the one that you see on the example. Have you ever eaten snails? And your answer may be, yes, I have. And when you continue to give more information about your answer, you're going to use the simple past. And you're not going to use the present perfect to continue on giving more information. Because typically what you want to do is you want to express an experience that you had last week about that particular question, right? Such as the example that we see there. Yes, I have. I tried them last month. And I want you to notice the question towards the bottom. It's no longer in the present perfect, but it is now in the simple past. And that's because we're asking questions about our um, past experience. We're no longer asking questions about um, if you've ever eaten snails. Now, the question is related to uh, the example that you see there. I tried them last month. And the next questions will be related to that event. And so the answer to that is, yes, I did. And then you give more information. They were delicious. And so we do the same thing uh, towards the left, towards, towards the right side of the example of this chart. Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? We start off the question using the present perfect. And then you continue on and, and you give either a positive or a negative answer. And then in this case, it happens to be a negative answer. No, I haven't. Um, and then you might give more information, but I ate at a Thai restaurant last night, right? Um, and then the next questions that are followed here are in the simple past. Did you go alone? No, I went with some friends. Now that we understand the concept on how this topic is used, what I would like to do now is I would like to explain how to form questions using the present perfect. And, um, and so let me do that at this time. First of all, uh, we should learn the following concept that we're going to use have. Have it's an auxiliary verb. 
and we're going to use have whenever I talk about the pronouns I, you, we, and they. And then I will use has whenever I talk about the pronouns he, she, or it, or in other words, third person, right? Um, and um, so having said this, what I would like to do now is I would like to present the structure on how to form those questions. So let me do that at this time. In order for us to form the questions, the first thing that we should include is an auxiliary have or has, as I mentioned, if we follow this rule, we learned that we're either going to use have if I talk about I, you, we, or they, and we use has whenever we talk about the third person. So in this case, um, we're going to use have, um, and then this follows the subject then this follows the word ever, and then the verb in its past participle form, and then whatever complement that exists. So in this case, have you ever eaten snails? And by the way, um, this word here is a frequency adverb, so sometimes you can remove it, um, and um, the question will still be correct. But in this case, we want to use it. Have you ever eaten snails? OK. Um, bien, vamos a aterrizar esto. Sacar cualquier duda que tengas con relación al presente perfecto. Y rápido, el auxiliar del presente perfecto es have para I, you, we, they. Repito, have, I, you, we, they. Has for he, she, it. Las reglas de las terceras personas en el presente simple aplican en el presente perfecto también. Con su auxiliar, más no con los verbos. Todos los verbos en positivo, negativo y en pregunta van a ir siempre en pasado participio. ¿Ok? Eh, ¿En qué tiempo estamos hablando? Por si alguien no se ha ubicado. Estás preguntando, ¿Has comido caracoles? ¿Ok? Have you, eaten, have you ever eaten snails? Y más bien, la pregunta es, ¿Alguna vez has comido caracoles? Have you ever eaten snails? Ese es el tiempo en el que estamos hablando. Sí, sí lo he hecho. I tried them last month. Los probé la semana pasada, el mes pasado. Ok, necesito que me hagan cualquier pregunta, por más tonta que les parezca, y digan, no es que se van a reír de mí. Más vale que se rían de mí una vez, a que pasar de tonto toda la vida. Así de que, por favor, si alguien tiene alguna pregunta, duda aún con el presente perfecto, Voy a contar hasta 10 en mi mente. 6. Eh, teacher. Eso. Teacher. Ajá. Eh, Víctor. Yo tengo una pregunta, uh -huh. pero igual este siempre lo vamos a, a poner solo la, el pasado, este presente perfecto, o voy a ir mezclados con el simple pass. Correcto, es lo que estamos tratando de aterrizar. Vamos por partes, correcto. Cuando yo hablo de una experiencia, Víctor, y hagámoslo, Víctor, ayúdeme. Eh, Víctor, ¿ya ha ido a Suchitoto? ¿Alguna vez ha ido a Suchitoto? Sí. sí una vez. Ah, ok. Uh, eh. ¿Él en y... español? No, 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 en ah, español. Ah, fui hace cinco años. Eh, chicos, ¿eso fue pasado o presente perfecto todavía? Fui a... Pasado. Pasado, ¿verdad? Sí, fui hace cinco años. Es lo que estamos aterrizando, tan sencillo como eso. El hecho de que hablar de una experiencia te obliga a contestar con el pasado simple. ¿Por qué? Porque las experiencias ya pasaron. Ajá. Pero ahí, pero en el pasado, en el presente perfecto, estamos hablando uh -huh. de un periodo en el tiempo o de algo abstracto en el tiempo. O sea, no, sin, no, eh, en algo específico. Es una experiencia que ya pasó o que puede estar aún en el presente. Por ejemplo, I have been working, no, I have worked, I have worked at Inglés Corporativo for five years. I have worked at Inglés Corporativo for five years. He trabajado en Inglés Corporativo por cinco años. Aún sigo acá. Uh -huh. Es una experiencia. Pero hasta Ajá. el día de ahora aún sigo. Okay. Ah, es como que dijera, yo fui, a, por ejemplo, a Colombia hace seis años. Eso sería pasado. Ajá, un pasado simple, normal. 
Ajá. Yo he ido mm. a Colombia. Ya. Yeah. Hasta yo, yo he ido a Colombia. No sabemos cuándo. De hecho, una particularidad del, del, presente, del presente perfecto es que a veces no importa cuándo ocurrió. Ya. Yeah. Si te mm. digo, I have bought a new cell phone. I have bought a new cell phone. He comprado un nuevo celular. ¿Importará cuándo lo compré? No. Eh, no. Lo que importa, lo que te quieres decir es que tengo un iPhone 12. ¿verdad? No hay un límite de tiempo. No hay una, un periodo de tiempo. No es, no es relevante cuándo se llevó a cabo la, opción, la acción. A veces sí. Yo te invito, Víctor, a comer pupusas. Yo llegué antes, luego llegas tú y me encontras todo panzón y te digo, man, I've eaten, I've eaten ten pupusas. I've eaten, o te digo, I've just, I've just eaten ten pupusas. Me acabo de comer diez pupusas. Right? Ahorita. Acaba de pasar. Es una experiencia que acaba de ocurrir, acaba de terminar. ¿Ok? Y ahí es donde donde se, 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 se hacen ro, 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 rollos y, y, y hasta yo incluso a veces me, quedé, me quedo pensando en cuanto al uso, ¿no? Que si se aplica en el pasado o el presente o acaba de ocurrir. Todo dependerá. Y una cosa que les recomiendo, y perdón, pero es la realidad, nuestra realidad. Ninguno nació aquí en Europa ni en Estados Unidos. Por ende, este tiempo se los recomiendo siempre a los estudiantes verlo traducido al español porque es muy castellanizado. Nosotros los salvadoreños no decimos, um, ¿has hecho tu tarea? ¿Sí? Sino que hiciste tu tarea. Hablamos en pasado mucho. Entonces, ¿has hecho tu tarea? Muy apegado al presente perfecto. Have you done your homework? Bien traducido. ¿Has hecho tu tarea? Bien. ¿Alguien tenía una pregunta por ahí, Carlos, creo? Sí, teacher. Este la... Lo que le, le estaba queriendo preguntar era de que si en el, en el pasado simple es como decir yo en tiempo pasado, como por ejemplo en el 2019 me compré una motocicleta, por ejemplo. Pero si, si lo, la misma pregunta la, la convierto al presente perfecto, ¿cómo, cómo podría ser? Excelente, me llega su, su forma de ver las cosas. Me llega, me llega. Uh -huh. Ok. Let's see. Hmm. Vamos a lo simple. I bought a bike. Ok. Veamos que me está corrigiendo esto. Ok. I have bought a bike. No quiere que haga contracciones, ok. Good. ¿Cómo lo traduciría, eh, Víctor? Eh, yo, eh, <risa> primero sería, yo, la primera parte sería, yo compré una bicicleta, una Excellent. motocicleta. Ajá, yo compré Pero una la segunda motocicleta. parte es, yo... Pues es como, yo he comprado una motocicleta el año pasado. Ah, un momento. Yo he yo comprado comp una motocicleta. No estoy especificando cuánto. I bought a bike. Mm -hmm. Compré una ah. moto. Ajá. I have bought a bike. Pe pe ah, pero eh, eh, en el simple, en, en, el, eh, en el simple sería, compré una motocicleta. Uh -huh. en, el, en, el, en, el, en el presente perfecto sería, yo he comprado una motocicleta. Correcto. Entonces, en una la acción ya terminó, en la otra puede que ya no tenga la motocicleta. Solo estoy diciendo que he tenido esa experiencia de haber comprado una motocicleta. Sí. Uh -huh. Ya, yeah. I have bought a bike. También puede ser, ojo, el contexto en el que estoy hablando varía mucho, ¿no? Puede que con la persona con la que estoy hablando, eh, solo me esté preguntando si ya he comprado una motocicleta y le digo, I have bought a bike, yeah. Yo he comprado una motocicleta. Y no importa cuándo, sino que la acción que se llevó a cabo de nuevo. Ok, yo he comprado una motocicleta, compré una motocicleta. Aún queda la duda, ¿no? Sí. Uh -huh. Ok. Ok.
Ok. Yo le dije anoche. Yo le he dicho. No, no podría decir anoche. I have told her. Yo le he dicho. Es simplemente hablar de la experiencia de la acción que se llevó a cabo. I have told her. Okay. In uh -huh. Incluso puedo ocupar adverbios de, de tiempo. I have always told her. I've always told her. Yo siempre le he dicho. Uh -huh. En pocas palabras, el presente perfecto viene siendo como más resumido, como más corto. Mm. Del pasado simple. Ok. Pasado simple, la acción se llevó a cabo y terminó. Fue una acción en el pasado, terminó. Pasado, eh, presente perfecto, una experiencia que he vivido. Pasada, pero que aún continúa. Que aún continúa, aún afecta, aún repercute en el presente, el presente perfecto, por eso se llama presente perfecto, porque aún está ahí, ¿sí? Um, sí, sí, ah. una pregunta. Uh -huh. Dice que estaba viendo el listado de verbos y si sí, algo, algo es tipo, como difícil entender eso, pero la mayoría tienden a, a el mismo pasado simple, es el, el presente perfecto, pero hay unos que veo que tienen e n y es por alguna regla gramatical o... o ok, o por... eh, si sí les envié el listado de verbos, ¿verdad? Ah. ¿Les envié el listado de verbos? No. 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 Oh, en serio. Es listado. Ah, y eso es lo que estaba viendo, que algunos tienen, en, por ejemplo... Eh, sí, lo envío. Ay, no. Vaya, de los verbos regulares, el pasado es el mismo... Pasado participio. Así de simple. El pasado de los verbos regulares, es decir, los que terminan en ED, ¿ya? Es el mismo pasado participio. Es decir, work, work, worked. ¿Ya? Ese es el pasado y el pasado participio. Play, played, played. Siempre. ¿Ya? Así de fácil. Pero los irregulares, ¿ok? Los irregulares, um, varían completamente, ¿no? Tengo, como lo veíamos, no. ¿Cuál es el pasado de no? New. 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 ¿Y el participio? No. 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 Ok, sí. ¿Cómo se llama la película de terror? So. 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 Uh -huh. ¿Y el pasado participio? Sí, sí, sí. Sí, so, sin. Sí, sí. Sí, sí. Sí, Y esa es la mejor manera de aprenderlo. Cuando estás viendo el pasado simple, estudiar el pasado participio de una sola vez para que no se te olvide. Buscar los que riman. Es muy importante también. ¿Ok? Es la única clave que cualquier profesor te va a dar. Hasta ahorita nadie ha dicho una clave como para que se te queden todos los verbos. Esos tres tiempos. Get, got. Puede ser got o gotten. Dependiendo si es británico o americano. ¿Ok? Get, got, gotten. Ok. Y de nuevo, chicos, aprender la regla gramatical es tan fácil como reemplazar piezas del rompecabezas. ¿Sí? Eh, les voy a enviar una imagen, nomás terminemos la clase en dos minutos, sobre el presente perfecto. ¿Ok? Estudien esa imagen, háganla grande, véanla por partes, y ahí están qué adverbios de tiempo se ocupan, la estructura, para qué sirve el, el presente perfecto. A mí siempre me ha gustado esa imagen y, y lo, lo ocupo mucho en las clases. Eh, ¿Por qué nadie me dijo que no estaba proyectando? <ríe> ay, 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 señor. Yo decía, qué raro, ¿dónde está el panel? Anyways, bien, eh, le voy a enviar esa imagen en un momento. Perdón, chicos, nadie me dijo que no estaba proyectando Word. So, I bought a bike. 
I have bought a bike, decíamos, I told her last night, I have always told her, I have met her last year, que era lo que estamos hablando, y decíamos, los verbos regulares, su pasado es el mismo pasado participio, como por ejemplo, worked or played. Voy a volver a enviar el listado de verbos, ¿ok? Ahorita, irregular, no, no new, known, si, sí, so, sin, 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 son, get, got, se puede got o gotten, cualquiera de las dos formas. Ok. Entonces, es que está diciendo thing, thing, pero thing es un adjetivo, no es un verbo. Ah, también, yeah, yeah, right, think, ajá. Uh -huh. What is the, the past? Thought. 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 ¿Y el participio? Thought. Same thing. Think, thought, thought. Think, mm -hmm. thought, thought. There you go. Bien, eh, les voy a enviar esa favorita para que lo estudien y lo apliquen y mañana volvemos a repasar. Lo voy a bombardear con preguntas mañana y voy a elegir uno por uno ahí para que me contesten por un minuto cualquier pregunta con presente perfecto, ¿ok? Estudien y prepárense para que practiquemos todos en la clase. Nos quedan dos semanas. Y por favor, si no has hecho la plataforma, te suplico que la termines ahorita. ¿Sí? La plataforma está funcionando. Tenemos que tener hasta el midterm, el examen de, de medio curso, ya terminado. ¿Ok? Ok. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Take care. Bye bye. 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 bye.